Right. And I thank God that now I'm here. That's right. And, and, and you, some don't like the idea like that. that I'm here, but God sent us. That's, That's right. right. He sent us and gave us a divine skill. That's right. Just like he given the apostle Paul. You are not qualified to be an apostle. The Bible says that evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving men and being deceived. There is such a person or such people out there, obviously there are, there are many out there, but there's one for some reason has just kind of got me stirred. Uh, I'm the kind of person who really doesn't like to, to see or to hear about someone kind of being bully and boastful and arrogant, and obviously there are many out there. And there's one that just kind of just gets me because of his his arrogant stance. And that really is kind of what I want to do now. Gino Jennings calls himself an apostle. There's a reason why he wants to do so. Because there are men who desire to be something or someone special. My name don't have to be in the Bible. That's right. No. That's right. But I tell you what Jesus did say. That's right. Give me Luke 11, 49. That's, right. That's it. Amen. Luke 11 and that verse 49. What justifies my arrival? <laughs> Listen. Luke 11 and verse 49. This is the promise that Jesus made. Therefore also, Therefore say, also say the wisdom of God. God's wisdom. I, 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 I will, send them will send them prophets, prophets and, apostles. and apostles. I will send them. God said I'm going to send them. Prophets and apostles. Now. You must continue to look for that until God comes. That's, That's right. right. Look for that. That's right. He said, I will send I them. Will. And remember, go ahead, go ahead. Paul's name wasn't mentioned there either. That's right. That's right. That's right. Sir. Paul came after, long after. That's right, so the scripture says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, in verse 11. It itemized the officers. That's right. The positions. That's right. That God have set in his church or among his people. Why is all these offices given? For the perfecting of the saints. For the completion of the development of God's people. For the work of the ministry. For the work of what? Work. For the work, work of the ministry. That's why these offices is here today. So the Amen. same thing that God had then. Amen. Glory to God he has right now. That's right. And I thank God that now I'm here. That's right. And, and, and you, some don't like the idea like that. that I'm here, but... God sent us. That's right. He sent us and gave us a divine skill. That's right. Just like he given the apostle Paul. When he makes a statement that he was sent by God and he's here to educate us and to perfect us and to complete us, it's kind of a boastful statement for somebody like that to make. And the way he kind of validates himself is that he declares himself like many others in the past, he has declared himself to be an apostle. But the fact of the matter is, he is no apostle. Paul is a different kind of apostle. Paul was taught by the Lord himself for three years apart from the other apostles. And it's interesting, um, a lot of people today will call themselves apostles. And let me say unequivocally, we have no apostles today. Amen. They're, they're gone. The age of the apostles is over. There are no apostles today. According to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, the apostles, right, and the prophets were the foundation upon which the church is built. I don't know how many foundations your house has. Mine only has one. Huh? The foundation is done. We do not have apostles today. The apostles have the authority to give us the scriptures. We do not have people today who have the authority to give us the scriptures. We do not have apostles today. When the Bible talks about an apostle, we need to understand really what the word is and how it's used. The word apostle or apostolos, the Greek word just, just really means to send or someone who's been sent. You'll see this word being used by Jesus in re reference to God when he uses the word apostolemos, which is the one being sent or that when Jesus says that you sent me. And so the word just kind of in its generic sense just simply means to send, or even if it's in the passive uh, tense, to be sent. It doesn't necessarily connote an office um, or a gifting. Anyone can send someone to do something or be sent. It's sort of likened to what, when we use the word 
uh, an angel or a messenger. It's just simply someone who's just giving a message. Nothing necessarily special about them unless we're talking about who sent the person and why they were sent. And so all throughout the Bible, you're going to see, especially in the New Testament, you're going to see those who have been called apostles. But when we talk about the apostles in the sense of the office of the apostle, uh, make no mistake about it, there are no more of them. I can send someone to do something and someone could rightly say that I am an apostle, but they are my apostle. And so when you say that you're Corey Miner's apostle, that didn't really mean anything special because of who sent you and what he sent you for. I can send someone to the store and pick up some bread and milk. Well, there's nothing special about that. And so anyone can be an apostle technically, but when we talk about apostle, you all kind of know what the person's meaning and what they're implying. They're implying that they are something a little bit higher up than the average person, more than the average preacher or teacher. They are something or someone who has been sent in a special manner. Well, to be an apostle or to have this office, there's some qualifications and we won't make this too exhaustive, but there's some there's some glaring things about this, this office that it's easy to see that this person, Gino, who's a fraud, does not qualify for. First of all, an apostle must have seen the risen Christ. According to Acts 1, 22, let's look and see what it says. When it was spoken of Matthias being the one to replace Judas, uh, who by the way was not an apostle, it tells us in verse 22, one of the main characteristics, one of the traits, and that is this. Beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So you needed to be a witness of his resurrection. You'll find other verses to kind of bolster this in, in chapter 22, verse, verse 14, I believe, also in 1 Corinthians 9. So one of the criteria is that you needed to have seen the risen Christ. Well, here's a quick question, and let's just count this up. I don't know how old Geno Jennings is, but Christ's resurrection was some 2,000 years ago. Let's just start adding up days and let's just see if you're old enough. You're not. So just by that simple uh, criteria, you are not qualified to be an apostle. Secondly, you had to be specifically sent by Jesus. Each of the apostles that we see, they were all sent by Jesus, including Paul. Now, he likes to kind of, Gino likes to kind of equate himself to, to a Paul because as he says, Paul was not specifically mentioned uh, when Jesus makes his statement in Luke, which is a, a silly statement that he makes. And so that he also was not mentioned like Paul, but Paul was an apostle just like he is. Oh. He ain't say he was the last one. No, no, he didn't say that. That's a lie that That's you lie. liars been telling. That's right. Amen. You wish you was the last one. So no, Paul wasn't the last one. No. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Not at all. No. You no, want no. to know how I became one? God no. appeared unto me. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. God did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, God Almighty Amen. appeared unto me Amen. and spoke to me like you did, Brother Paul. Yeah. And let me know why he appeared. That's right. Unto me this day to make thee a minister, a minister. and a witness. That's right. No, Paul wasn't the last one. No. And no. neither am I. That's right the arrogance and the boastfulness of this person. So you can see why he needs to kind of be taken down a peg or two or 10. We know Paul was specifically selected by Christ and we also know that he was affirmed by it. We'll talk about that in just a second, but to be an apostle, you will have to say that I was selected by Christ, but don't come with this thing, well, he came to me in a dream and he selected me. Another criteria that we see that all of the apostles had some sort of miraculous power coming with them. Namely, when you see gifts being poured out and when you see, let's say, someone speaking in these other languages, not this gibberish babbling that we call tongues, but an actual language, every time you see it happening, it was under the hand of what? An apostle, someone who was sent by Jesus. You also see these gifts of healing and things like that that are, that are happening under the hands of the apostles. Well, the reason why is because remember what, what the Bible tells us, that he is going to build the foundation of the church on what? On these apostles, on these, in this case, these 12 plus now Paul, these 13 apostles, 
and the other 12 dealt with Israel, dealt with the Jews, and then you have Paul being an apostle sent to be an apostle to whom? To the Gentiles. And that is the foundation of the church, and as the Bible says, Jesus being the chief cornerstone. Why? Well, because he did not want to have this divided church, and so he starts off first with the Jews, then you see it going to the Samaritans, then the Gentiles, and to the rest of the world, right? And so you have the Jews and the Samaritans covered by those 12 apostles, and you see, and history tells us where these different apostles went to. <laughs> what was interesting is that them scattering and spreading the gospel was because of this next apostle, Paul, who comes and persecutes the church, but then Jesus comes to him, and then he becomes an apostle to who? To the Gentiles. What's interesting about his apostleship and that Paul, on occasion, sees it necessary to defend his apostleship, he's also defended by other apostles, namely, chiefly among them, Peter. Peter talks about Paul, and he even equates Paul's writings to those of the rest of scriptures. So an apostle, especially these, are going to be validated and affirmed by other apostles, also by their works and miracles. One of the things that each of the apostles had to go through was just some time in ministry. One, they didn't declare themselves apostles. They were chosen by Jesus. They spent time, they grew in him. This wasn't some kind of quick thing that happened and they decided to proclaim themselves an apostle. Uh, and in this case, we see how Paul spent time to confirm and to make sure. And the rest of them, they actually journeyed with Jesus. And then Matthias, he also uh, was around. He was one of the the, uh, the disciples that were around. And then he was chosen. He also seeing the resurrection. And so uh, we don't want to nowadays to find men or men nowadays who want to call themselves apostles and even prophets or something, something special, bishop, they want to convey these titles upon themselves without having actually put in really any real meaningful time. And then here's the other clincher. All the apostles suffered greatly in their ministry and to finish out their earthly ministry. I doubt that any of these men who call themselves apostles or, or bishops or prophets or whatever, I doubt that they want to go through and suffer the same thing that any of these apostles actually went through. And people always go, ah, but wait a minute, though. Brother, you know, we got Paul, right? Paul had his own encounter with the Lord. I had my own encounter with the Lord. So I'm an apostle just like Paul was an apostle. Well, at the end of Galatians chapter 1, in verse 18, Paul says, Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas, or Peter, and remain with him 15 days. Why, after the three years that he spent with the Lord, did Paul go to Jerusalem to spend 15 days with Peter? Um, he didn't say. But chapter 2, beginning of verse 1, this is shortly after his statement about going up for 15 days after three years. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up because of a revelation and set, bef set before them though privately before those who seemed influential, the gospel that I proclaimed among the Gentiles in order to make sure I was not running or had not run in vain. Paul didn't say, yeah, I had my own experience. I'm an apostle in my own right. After three years, he went up and spent 15 days with Peter. Why? To make sure that what he had been given was in line with what the 12 had been given. Then after 14 more years, he went up again to make sure that his gospel lined up with the gospel of the other apostles. And so since these men are the foundation and there's only one foundation, all we can do is build on the foundation with godly doctrine. And so one of the surefire ways to determine and to see if a person is or, not, or is not an apostle, of course, again, there are no apostles today. And if he is, check the person's doctrine. Look at the persons, the people today who call themselves apostles and prophets. Look at their doctrine. See if it lines up. Explain how I know what I know. Amen. How is it that I'm able to go into the scriptures and strip them down? That's right. 
as using fractions. Break them down to the lowest common denominator. That's right. Wonderful. My divine skill was godly given. I didn't go to no seminary school, right. never took no Bible course. I never studied theology. Amen. Never. Never. And I didn't go to no seminary school, right. never took no Bible course. I never studied theology. Amen. Never. And I didn't go to no seminary school, right. never took no Bible course. I never studied theology. Amen. Never. But you question me about this God of heaven. That's right. Question me about his law. Amen. Pick up any subject you want to talk about in the Bible. That's right. And say if the God of heaven don't drop me in it, take it apart, split the atom, and show you the nucleus of it. That's right. Wonderful. That's right. Yes, sir. My skill God is God-given. Given. God Amen. I have to credit God. I can't credit nobody else. That's right. God be praised. I didn't get this from my mother. No, no. No, I didn't get this from my blood father. Amen. I got it. I got it from God. That's right. That's right, sir. Only God Himself can instill such boldness within a person. Amen. He did not see himself as an independent apostle. He did not see his gospel as beyond question and separate from the gospel that the other apostles preached. He knew that his gospel must be the historic gospel. And he says, if it wasn't, then he too would have run in vain. I didn't go to no seminary school, right. never took no Bible course, I never studied theology. Amen. Never. One of the things that we do, because whether a person understands the, the actual original language is Hebrew or Greek or not, if you've got sound doctrine, then the person who understands Hebrew and Greek, their understanding of the Bible will line up with the other person who doesn't understand it. Because if you are really sent by God, your doctrine is going to line up clearly and perfectly with the languages that God himself ordained. He's the one that ordained that this Bible, the Old Testament, be written primarily in Hebrew and the New Testament primarily in Greek. That was God's doing. And so if rules of Greek grammar and Hebrew grammar don't line up with this apostle's doctrine, surefire way to see that this person is off. So with a person like Geno Jennings, who believes that there is no such thing as a trinity, a person like Geno Jennings who believes that um, you can lose your salvation. A person like Geno Jennings who believes that we are supposed to speak in these ecstatic languages, these, these, this babbling, these tongues that he calls them. You can see where his doctrine is off. And so you'll see other videos that we'll do to kind of expose him and his doctrine. And so this is not going to be an exhaustive uh, video about him, but it's kind of the first uh, in a series of a couple to let you know that this is a person you need to be warned of and to stay away from. If he's got any issues with it, I would love to hear what his issues are. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to hear from some of his followers. But we're going to go to, to the Bible and we're going to use the Bible to be what navigates us through the scriptures. Not anymore this kind of tough talk, this uh, loud talk, this angry scowl that you have on your face. Almost like, and I, I kind of wondered, where have I seen this before where you've got the man... Uh, reading this scripture and you hype men beside you like they're your bodyguards or, or protectors. Where have we seen this before? What word from the originator? Look at now. Then every man is a potential son. Yeah, so this is kind of indicative of a of a Farrakhan or some of these other guys, these other men who, who want to be something special and so you are no apostle, there are no apostles. Why not just simply let the scriptures be what they are and you be a teacher and a preacher of those instead of being somebody special? Let God be the one, if he deems that you are something special, let him be the one that raises you up rather than you being that person. And so the best way that I can conclude this video is just to use Geno Jennings' own words to describe him to himself. Use a liar!